So I don't think we need to go over the Zoom etiquette or any of that stuff. Um, did everyone get a copy or had a chance to review the minutes from the June 27th meeting? Yes. Uh, can I have a motion to accept those? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, we'll start with the city view shed overlook. Uh, you want to walk us through that if you don't mind? Sure. <clears throat> um, so this is a really just the insertion of a couple of words here in an existing sentence um, in the scenic view shed overlay. <clears throat> it, whether or not it's needed, it, it just helps to clarify. There's a section uh, up above here on the uh, scenic view shed overlay in uh, section to see that says applicability of the SVO district is overlaid on so the underlying zoning district, all the provisions of the underlying district shall be applied except where provisions of the district differ, in which cases the more restrictive shall apply. So we may already be covered, but I'll tell you what happened was I was looking at the, uh, the property where the Dame Retreat House is and just in a what if situation and doing some analysis and it's in the scenic view shed overlay. And so I was like, okay, one acre, but it's also in the AR2. So it should be a minimum of a two acre. And so developer theoretically could make a case. It should be one acre without this. So this inserts these words in section D1 that says the minimum lot size in the SVO district shall not be less than one acre or the minimum lot size of the underlying zoning district, whichever is greater, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions, thoughts? No, that's good. I think it does, it does clarify because in that C it says the underlying district shall be applied except where provisions of the SVO district differ. It differs here, so it is necessary, I would think. Yeah, I think it really just helps to clarify. Yeah, it does. Yeah. We're all comfortable with it? Yep. That seems like a no-brainer. Okay, motion to approve. To vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can I just add one more thing on this? I, I was contacted by Robin Evans last week. I met with her uh, about some other stuff. And she, again, was asking for us to do something. She keeps asking for it to go in the scenic view shed overlay relative to protection of trees. We have another section of code relative to trees. It might be something that needs to be discussed. I know we've had, we had an applicant just recently basically cut down a lot of trees and they're just now making application. I know that there's two parcels on Brickyard Road where they've gone in and just completely clear cut it and they're now making applications. So that is something where we're having people do some pretty significant cutting down of trees before making application or in the process. Now, didn't mm. we have language in one of the ordinances that yeah. I seem to recall that if a person cleared land pre-permit application, that they couldn't develop the land for some period of time? I don't remember. I don't know, you're, that. you're right. I'm yeah. trying to think what there's, is that. And there's something in the conservation subdivision. Yeah, there's, there's a piece in the conservation subdivision relative to trees, right? Yeah. But that I think is more specific to conservation subdivision, right? That's where I'm wondering if we might need to visit something outside of conservation subdivision. What's what's the legality of that? I, I can see it if it, we, we're dealing with a developer in a conservation subdivision, but if I live in an lot and I want to knock down <clears throat> some trees, usually for a view or something. What kind of authority does a municipality have? Well, it gets sticky, right? So you know Fox Ridge. Fox Ridge and that whole thing, right? They have to come to the planning board to get approval because right. it was part that, of the that subdivision. That was a subdivision so, rule. But right. You're talking about individual. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I admit I have knocked down some trees. Yeah. That's a question we get all the time in our I, office. I, I don't think you, you can go there. No. Well, what's the question? The question is... My neighbor's taking down some trees. Do they need a permit? Can they do that? What you know? What can the town do? 
if they're taking down some trees, they're trees and they're not I protected. Mean, it's their trees, but in the, yeah, I think that, it just, yeah, that's why you got to treat the view shed, the strategic view shed area differently, right? In that specific area. So it probably needs something specific because Robin's contacted me too, asking about getting the getting that in there. Just some stronger language for tree protection within that district. So which trees? All trees? That would have to be well delineated. And do you want to do you want to do it more than just the senior view shed? I would think it would be more. I mean, there's a lot of wooded parcels that yeah. <clears throat> but I do, yeah, I agree with Tom. I think I think view shed would be an acceptable place to protect and have some at least you have to have some consultation with with somebody in the town before you do that, before you clear on the in that view shed. But I think somebody on um, Brickyard or Cooley or Coy or anywhere else, it's kind of hard to say to them, this is your property now, but you can't cut the trees down. Okay, but let me take that. Uh, so the two parcels on Brickyard Road are on the upslope side of Paddleford Creek, mm -hmm. right? So by clear cutting, now you got all that sediment going down into the creek, which eventually wakes its way off to Sucker Brook, or not Sucker Brook, to the Canandaigua Outlet and then onto the Erie Canal. From a natural resource protection, do you want to allow that? I mean, I think you've got to check slip. some legal precedent on the I agree. Remember that fellow from California on West Lake Road? He yeah. went yeah. up there and Mink. clear cut that whole hill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, would I think we pinched him on, uh, well, he had, he had erosion right. and everything washing down mm -hmm. the West Lake. So we, we put him through some sort of exercise. Well, Bruce, Bruce, yeah, Bruce. Bruce. That's it. Yeah. That's the guy. Yeah. Uh, but that was right. from a natural but resource. We, we so nabbed him. I it was after the fact. Oh, it was after right. the fact. Yeah. 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 Chris said either you go to the planning board or I, you know, I find him. So it's the planning board. And then how do you how do you differentiate the trees? Calver. Would you do it by diameter? You would have to. Cut down four inch trees, but you can't cut down larger trees. It's six inches thick on my so we, it, Well, that's a threshold we use a lot. Oh, cool. When we ask for existing conditions no. plans, we generally ask for six inches six inch and inch higher. Trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Again, if they make it part of an application, you can usually see it and review it. Yeah. yeah we control it, but it's after the fact. It's right. The, it's a problem. Well, that's a Bruce. Didn't you start clearing before you oh, yeah. came to us to build this house? He did. Yeah, he hired yeah. a woodchuck guy. And, and the so then the other thing is logging is actually a defined say. definition in ag and markets as part of agriculture, right. right? So that was what Bruce was saying was that he was agricultural harvesting. But when he created the road that created the erosion, that's what we got him on. Yeah. What are you a logger? Is it more than three? <laughs> or is it more than 12 inches in diameter? <laughs> or uh, I don't know. I think that's touchy ground. You need a little research. It's a, it's a thorny question. I mean, it, <clears throat> I, 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 I just I just clear cut all the pine trees out by the road in front of my house. They're, half of them were dead, but I eliminated everything out there, but I was told that that's no problem. Take them down. We'll go to that. Who gave I can't permission? reveal my can't. Story. <laughs> <laughs> they call my lawyer. <laughs> it is. I remember in the, when I was on the planning board that the um, Fox Ridge, we had some of the lots that are down west the uh, Ridge Road there, just where it starts coming up again where it was still wooded, where they hadn't cleared. But each lot, if somebody came in to develop the lot, they had to go out and tag the trees that are going to leave. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to come out, you know, for the footprint of the house and for construction and all that. But that was a requirement at that time that, you know, we do that. So, but that was particularly just to that yeah, development. Yeah. So that was also. Was it that was a developer coming in or the homeowner coming in? That was the developer coming in. No, it was, no, the individual homeowners came in. Yeah. Well, it's whoever it was. I usually was Racco, but you know, right. they come in and make a presentation. <clears throat> I'm going to place the house here. So this tree, this one, we'd go out and look and they'd have tags on the trees. And, 
I, I, yeah, that's what's going to happen, Sunset Ridge. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that's what you've asked like them to do. We made a mm -hmm. requirement condition. I worry too about making it more difficult for the average homeowner who buys a lot and then putting more and more restrictions on them to mm -hmm. put up a house that they might have dreamed up for years and, and put that up. The clear cutting really is just everything. Everything is going. Everything is going. <laughs> It seemed like it should be some way to differentiate between clear cutting and you gotta take down 20 trees surgical. out of 100. Yeah, surgical yeah. removal. Right. Yeah. 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 Take down the trees. What's that language? So it's intentional. Like, yeah. Prohibited without prior approval, prohibited without. But maybe something in the scenic view shape. Like, yeah, because I just think that's an area that we can, we can look at. Town, I, don't right see town, I don't see town wide. No. Speaking as a builder, it's a lot easier to come in and just clear cut everything. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. 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 So that that's, that's why developers come in and they'll just pull over the dolls. It's just it's so much easier. Over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I personally think it looks like hell when you do that, but it's it's all the cost, all dollars. Right? Well, it's got to be. I don't know how you word clear cutting is allowed with prior approval from. Yeah. Uh, there should be some oversight of some form. <laughs> well, we need to, I mean, we need to look at ag and markets and see what their thresholds are. What is considered logging? How many? I can look into that too. So based on that feedback, I mean, you're welcome to, I guess, draft up some language and have us take a look at it if you think we should. Yeah, I mean, I can, <laughs> Sean and I can work yeah. on something and then Send something and it sounds at, like so. maybe um, the priority would be the scenic view over the Bay Area. Weren't we in the initial draft of the scenic view shed? Remember the, the multi page one? Uh, didn't, yeah. didn't we address trees in that to some degree? I, yeah. I think we, we got did. The trees. Yeah. I can't remember what we had. Maybe it was about siding the house and yeah, it was, anyway. about it was very trees. specific. Though. Yeah. yeah, I think <clears throat> that you have to be. Um, six inch diameter trees, that's not very large trees, um, but a more mature tree that maybe is, I don't know, pick, pick a dimension, but six inches like this, right? That's still a lot of years to get to that point, though. Yeah, yeah that's big, really. Because we require two to two and a half for baby new trees. New trees. Yeah. yeah. Plants. So six inches is <clears throat> substantial, and then it's had time. But even among trees, there are bad boys and good boys. Mm -hmm. like, uh, right. This, right. Uh, <laughs> is, 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 is we need to put that in there. It's such a bad knack. Bad boy so trees. Only good boy trees are. And then that's I, funny. I, but I think you got to do some research on the can't be basis native hardwoods or something yeah, to uh, protect. Well, and then I guess my other question is, what do you want to regulate? Do you want to, if they mm -hmm. cut down one tree, do you want that to be regulated, or is it more so than? Six than five. or whatever, pick a number. I mean, and I think it relates to and then you're how many get, are there. You know, well, also the size position. of your parcel, right? It's so just you've created a uh, you know a precedent, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can think of a person or a family that recently cut down six or eight enormous walnuts because they found them objectionable. Uh, because the they're messy. Walnuts, they're they messy. Kill, they, 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 yeah. they, yeah, they kill your <clears throat> up there. But I know damn well they didn't ask permission of anybody. But if we're going to get into that kind of policing and they're in the view shed, uh, it's going to be hard. You're, you're, you just open up some more. I think we give them Chris a right. hell of a problem. <laughs> Is there a way to focus on new? I mean, we, we need to focus on new. new. We can focus on new for now, but yeah. you've been there for 20 years and you cut down a couple. There's nothing. I don't want to touch that. Mm. But focus on new, new build, new areas. Relative well, we limits to an application. Relative to, yeah. But if an application comes yeah. in, then you can look at it. But I have no interest in. <laughs> so maybe it's a, something as simple as because we can usually through encore through other sources we can see what was there or what wasn't there right so maybe yes. it's a, something as simple as that the application would be treated as if the trees are there 
you know, uh, when it's being reviewed, even if they had been cut down. And then the planning board maybe makes them replant just as many or whatever. Implications you can handle, but right. existing, yeah. I, I know, yeah. Yeah. and after the fact, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. difficult, Brandon, right. I can see. Then where do you stop? Yeah, the contractor wants a clear cut so he can put his utilities in and right. do the grading for, but we can handle that. <laughs> Yeah, tell them <clears throat> trees to leave and what grades to. I mean, can't we add that into the site plan process? Yeah. No trees. You know, once you submit your application, that stays everything. You can't start cutting things down. You, it's yeah. as is. So that's just existing, existing conditions. Conditions. That's why you're trees now. Yeah, like, we do that. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. We Whether do it's what? in the code or not, I have no idea, but we do it. <laughs> but not all. Patients would come to you guys. Yeah. Any new house? Comes Any new house? house. Yeah. You see pretty much everything. Yeah. Any disturbance more than 10,000 square feet or any new home <clears throat> comes to planning board. Town line. Okay. Good. All right. We'll work on some. Yeah. But meanwhile, the the ordinance committee is okay advancing this to at least clarify this in the meantime, right? So, okay. Yeah. Right. Any other issues with CMQ shed now that you've been implementing it? Think about some tweaks in the well, don't, you know, yeah. Yeah. What's, think what's, about it. What is the status of that land on the uh, cross from you? Oh, Foster, yeah. the nothing's happening with it. Is that part of the it's a, it's a shoulder damage thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Catholics have to well, sell off no, all it's, not, it's, it's different. Not, it's owned by their dentists. They're in what, who Baltimore? Separate. Maryland? They're separate from the diocese, but they're still they're part of the Catholic Church, separate from the diocese. So they have their own structure. The greedy lawyers have figured out. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's why they're protecting it. So they they have a different line back to Baltimore and then back to the Vatican. So no pedophiles. <laughs> Anyhow, um, <laughs> so as the, with that, we're watching it. There's no there's no update. Yeah. Hopefully, shortly. But I'll just of next year is the. Closure day. Oh, they'll shut the facility that's down. The, that's the that hard deadline that we know that we've that they've clarified from the beginning is that of 2023. As of August of 2023, it won't function as it is right now. Were there any? Well, do we know whether there were any deed restrictions when that was given to them by the? And I just walked in. No problem. With the folks down front, remember her? Mm, yeah, yeah, the one her family who um, she tried. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. 16. Yeah, so, yeah she's, she's been in. The parcel that abuts it, right? Yeah. Where they knocked the house in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they gave that to the presenters. The one that if there was any deed yes. restriction. The one that touches okay. Westlake Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Or Farron. 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 You are Farron. Farron still made me. Yep. I noticed that the uh, deed restrictions when it was donated. <clears throat> no idea. I'm sorry. Any, do you know of any deed restrictions that the Farron's made when they donated it? No. Can't you get a copy of the deed on Encore? Not on Encore. No, okay. but it's available okay. through the county clerk's office. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It be, might be a worthwhile <clears throat> research. Is that part of the acreage now or is it a separate part? They have cleared a clear cut in the area right next to the strip that came down to Westlake Road, County Road 16. It went up where the statue was up on the hill. Yeah. Just north of that, that whole area was all grubbed out yeah, three or four weeks ago. Just nasty brush. Yeah, yeah, but it made me wonder why. You know, I mean it's. The whole thing is kind of in limbo right now. What's going to happen with it? There is a group trying to put together a proposal to do something. Who knows what? 
Have they reached out to you? Did you go to one of their meetings? No. No, but I talked to the guy that is. Yeah, he's one of the leaders there, so. But they don't have anything put together yet, so. There should maybe this was supposed to come out last week or something. There was going to be a release that the group was going to put out, but oh. I, I did not see anything put on last week. They have it. That's what they're going to put out. They're going to buy it to preserve it. They're going to. There's the group working yeah, on it. It's going to release their kind of their a strategic plan mm -hmm. for the property with the intent of protecting. Cool. So you're still talking about the Notre Dame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um yeah which i didn't see it come out last week so maybe it'll be out this week's almost over so well no this week just started no it's monday. <laughs> it's monday oh my god oh yeah. i don't even know when or where <laughs> it's an eight year long day <laughs> Just remember town board meeting. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> <but> <laughs> town board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Terry runs public meetings. You can run the public meetings. Right, <laughs> okay. Let's uh, talk about incentive zoning. And my understanding of this, Doug, can you correct me if I'm wrong, is just to modify the language so that the town board can uh, use incentive zoning in any of the districts that that is correct currently it's limited to those uh, districts that uh, kim has there on the screen and so the proposed modification would allow the town board to have the authority to designate incentives in all zoning districts of the town of canada um, well my only question is why did we limit it to just those districts originally any <coughs> idea great, great question um well, so that was done around now that was here and then. Yeah, yeah, that was done a long, long time ago. But I mean, there there were are, you know, you, you could make arguments as to why it should only be in certain zone districts, right? Where you want a Let me public hear it. One argument. Well, you may not want the town board in the future to give an incentive uh, in exchange for something different in a residential lake district. Currently, it would not be allowed. Or another one would be the form-based code, right? So think about that for a second. Let's talk about that one. Form-based code, we have a defined area that of the town where we would say we have a certain build out and a certain thing that the community wants to see in terms of that zoning district. The incentive zoning would allow basically a deviation from that plan. The town board would have that authority. The same really for the RLD, and that's really one of the big ones here, or AR1 or AR2 or SCR1. I, I don't think any of those are currently allowed. The zoning, the underlying zoning, has a specific intent, a specific purpose as to what it is that's supposed to be happening in that zoning district, right? That's the whole purpose of essentially zoning. Incentive zoning provides a wild card. Now, it's the town board making the decision. The town board ultimately has the ability they could change zoning, whatever, but it really gives not only our current town board, but future town boards the ability to, in exchange for something, something, whatever it is the town board decides, that they could change the zoning to incentive zoning and allow something to happen. So the town of Canandaigua, I don't feel like does incentive zoning as much as a lot of other municipalities. Farmington is a perfect example. Farmington did has done a lot with housing developments in incentive zoning, even on Canandaigua Farmington Town Line Road on the north side. That was all agricultural areas that the town of Farmington granted incentive zoning to build those housing developments. The town of Farmington has also granted incentive zoning for solar projects. Um, so it really, it does, you know, I just, it, I'm not arguing against doing this. I'm just saying, just be aware that this could open the door for proposals to come to the town board. Well, I think we should hear both sides of the coin, right? We should examine both sides. I mean, it's, and talk about both sides. And I think my initial response to hearing all that is, yeah, that's true. However, in theory and in practice, the town board represents the community and voted in place by the community. So, um, all the decision, right? 
I mean, even without this, there are ways of, with, to change it. So just you have to go through multiple steps. Mm -hmm. um, this just kind of cleans it up and does make it makes it simpler. It makes it simpler, <coughs> and it does put the you know the buck stops back at the town board with those decisions. And uh, I think it's a lot easier for people to to get behind and understand. Yeah, yeah. I think it's contract zones and something mm -hmm. what it is. Yes. And, We'll let you have this if you give us that, and I'm sure it's all signed. You know, I've got a piece for us, and I, I, I guess I see it as the next evolution from form base because form base had a lot of leeway and flexibility with certain controls under our regulation. Incentive is just right, it's the whole town, right? It's almost like we started truthfully with the mixed use overlay, right? Which yeah. provided us some flexibility yeah, yeah, and then form based yeah, code, yeah, 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 and then yeah. now incentive zoning. If we Really make this. I mean, so it's involved. applicable town wide, essentially. So we don't have a history of using it. I mean, it helps some we've used it for the villains. The villains. Where else have we used instead of zoning in the past? I don't. I can't think of any application. But no, because prior, <clears throat> the town really used the planned unit development aspects, yes. like the whole mm -hmm. center point area that's <clears throat> off Bud Old Brookside. PUDs, I think, have to have a minimum of 60, 60, 60 yeah, something yes, like that. Yes, it's 60 acres. Whereas incentive zoning really there doesn't some, have that, no. so it gives more flexibility. Yeah, yeah, it could be an individual lot of mm -hmm. a few acres. Or, right. When was this initially passed? Was it after that study that some third party came to us with? Maybe you want to zoning? Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been around the back in the back in the was it was, yeah, it was right. six, seven, whenever yeah, that's been actually around. started. The other night at the planning board meeting, we talked about a little bit. Amanda was making a presentation on her mm. review for uh, low uh, lower cost housing, and uh, incentive zoning was a way of possibly, you know, putting the lower cost house in an area a zoning district that it wouldn't apply normally. So. It was, it was, you know, it was a consideration, and we all said, "Yeah, that's a possibility." If the town board would approve it, but it's, it's a chance to take a lot that maybe uh, is affordable to some degree, and then put uh, lower income. And they were willing to give something in exchange for that to the town. Yeah, so, so we need to just, just a, it wasn't a specific discussion. lot, it was just a general discussion. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, there'd have to be something in return. Yeah. Yeah. We need to talk about that a little bit. Tom, to answer your question, it it must have predated our our more modern tracking of the town code because there's no date actually in the town code for incentive mm -hmm. zoning. Because yeah. like more recently, it tells you the local law number in the year every time you look at the chapter. And I'm, I'm getting you know. confused with when we had the discussion about <coughs> sending and receiving areas. The TDR. The TDR. Yeah. 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 TDR is with more recent. Yeah. Um, so Kim, if you can go to, I think it's section O. It's the last section. Uh, John, to your point, we need to talk about this. The uh, Keep going, keep going. The final red line section. Payments. There you go. So this is uh, the red line here are also changes proposed with this. Um, <clears throat> cash payment in lieu of amenity. If the town board finds that a community benefit is not suitable on the site and cannot reasonably be provided, the town board may require a cash payment in lieu of provisions of the amenity. That part's already in there. These funds shall be placed in a fund or capital project at discretion of the town board to be used by the town board exclusively for amenities specified prior to acceptance of funds. Cash payments shall be made prior to the issuance of a building permit. Cash payments and loan amenities are not to be used to pay general or ordinary town expenses. Cash payments may be directed to existing reserve funds, capital projects, other funds or funds or projects to be created by the town board. The purpose of putting that in there is we have a series of reserve funds now. The comptroller's office actually tells municipalities what reserve funds they can and can't have. For instance, the open space fund. The open space fund is a reserve fund actually that is allowed by municipal law for a municipality to have. Let's say the contribution is a million dollars the developer is willing to pay in exchange for the incentive zoning. The town board may want to take all that million dollars put in the open space fund, 
they may see uh, aspect relative to um, uh, demand on parks. They might want to put part of it into the parks fund. They might want to break it up and put it in different places. So this would give the town board that flexibility to say where that money is going to be used or where it's going to go, not necessarily used, but well, used or go. Because it could just go into reserve fund or it could go to a capital project for something that is ongoing, in which case there's an expense. Which is what we did with the villas project. We had a group set up to negotiate with the uh, developer. And we had a list of about 10 different amenities that we presented to the developer in exchange for that incentive zoning. One of them was uh, we extended the uh, or had the uh, sewer line extend to pass the churches on Middle Cheshire Road, switchback trail, the turning lane on Middle Cheshire Road to go east. Uh, there were Albright property on Middle Cheshire Road swamp that we got. That was something the town had been negotiating with the Albright family to purchase. And the developer came in and uh, bought the property unbeknownst to us and then presented it to us and said, look, we've already done this for you. So what more do you need? What more do you want? And we had a list of items there. It was, as I said, around 10 different items. And they granted you know, all of those things in exchange for having the, I think it was AR2. I think it, it was, was rezoned R130 and then right. the incentive zoning. Right. And they were allowed to put up right. the quad units that they have in there now. So it was, you know, we got something, they got something, you know, it was very contentious as I remember though at the oh, time, yeah. there were a lot of objections to it, but principle one being that's just going to spread further down middle Cheshire Road. Well, it didn't. Well, so, incentive zoning can be contentious. And so I think about when Farmington was going through the process to approve that housing development on the north side of Town Line Road. All the way down New Michigan Road, well into the town of Canandaigua, you had great big signs that had I Z with a circle with a line through oh, them. Yeah. You know, so it can be contentious, especially if you have a project coming in that maybe the neighborhood doesn't want. But there's public hearings, obviously, through the process, and the town board, and you know, the neighborhood always doesn't want whatever is coming. Let me just think out loud for a second. Change. Um, Yes. relative to this cash payment. Mm -hmm. So we have a great board right now, but let's say down the road when none of us are sitting in this room, the town board could have issues with their operating expenses and could use a cash payment to supplement the operating budget? This says that they can't, can't do that. that. No. Can't do that. This specifically says no. that they cannot do that. Yeah. But so can they manipulate funds down the road so that change the law? Uh, indirectly, they do that. You like take reserve money, so you yeah. use them for but then you know, reserve they fund dedicated then use the reserve fund, yeah, the unallocated reserve fund or something, and move it in. The, what a future town board could do is amend that, right? Yeah. That, that's more likely to happen, yeah, that, right? It's a level, and that could always happen, right? Yeah, yeah. they go rogue. <laughs> <laughs> the the only but to your point john like so theoretically let's say there was a million dollars in the parks fund and maybe a future town board is saying okay we're going to use all of the parks fund to cover the parks expenses right but even that has restrictions that it has to be used for new purposes so it becomes difficult to you that's why the comptroller actually regulates those reserve funds so closely so the likelihood of that happening would be slim. Yeah, I mean, anything's always possible, yeah. but yeah. they could do it, but then they would probably get in trouble with the comptroller's office for doing that. Yeah, and they'd probably get a slap on the hand. Bad, bad publicity. <laughs> we need any more discussion on this? Is there a fee for this, an actual application fee? They're in the fee schedule. There's Is there a, for incentive zoning fee? Right. But the fee that we're talking about. No, but here, I'm asking. Uh, I don't remember seeing it in the what it was. So maybe it's fifty dollars. I think the MUO was fifty. That one that pops up very often. So. Right, right. I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me, and I apologize to everyone that I'm on speakerphone. 
Um, are we talking about changing incentive zoning to be applicable in all zoning districts, or have we discussed that, or just yeah. extending it to more than we currently have, or just wondering where we were on that? The proposal is applicable to all zoning districts, Emily. We we were discussing. You may have jumped in in the middle of that. We were talking about that. Thanks. Any other com comments, Adeline? Um, not on this one. I have something to bring up later when we get past this. So. Okay. But just refresh my memory. What's the procedure for an incentive zoning application? Because it's it's, it's similar to, to the, the MUO process. Oh, so it's the back and so forth. So you'll between the back and board. forth. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 actually it's a actual rezoning, right? So what would happen is somebody would make an application to the town board. The town board would refer it out to the entities for comment relative to the rezoning because it's a traditional rezoning. Okay. Then it comes back to the town board and the town board would then actually rezone the parcel. Once the parcel is rezoned, the person could make application to the planning board for development when based you on- negotiate the amenities or payment? <clears throat> The town board more than likely, well, because it says prior to the issuance of any permit, so, right? So. Okay. so who proposes the incentive? Well, that would have to be a negotiation with the town board. This really is a wild card. This would be a negotiation so between either the town party board. could present yeah. the incentive. Mm -hmm. So the, the developer could say, out, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to give you this, out. and the town board could negotiate from that point and say, yeah, we don't want that, we want this. Yep. That's what or the did. town board could initiate the incentive. Yep. Either way. Either one. Yeah. So it's wide open. It is. Mm -hmm. wide but open. then it comes back. So you say you negotiate all the zoning schedule, everything is different. That's set. And then it comes back to the planning board for site plan. You're correct. Okay. Yeah. At that point, it just becomes a normal application. Then it, yeah. And then it goes the through the zone. flow. Yeah. Right. Normal. Yeah. Yep. Conditions. Yep. Where it has to happen. It's Adeline again. Are we planning to discuss TDRs in conjunction with this or no? Uh, the current proposal does not have anything about TDRs in it. Okay. I have to plead ignorance on that. Transfer, transfer of development rights. So we uh, transfer development rights is a tool in the toolbox relative mm. to transferring development rights from an area where you want to see less development and so you send those development rights to another area where you want to see more development. And we did a we did a pretty extensive, exhaustive survey over a year with uh, BFJ planning, and they actually did a whole report analysis for the town of Canandaigua um, relative to TDRs. And it's actually on the website. Uh, it's a couple hundred page document, but essentially it's this. What they were saying is if you have an area where, like for instance, we have the strategic farmland protection area, we could say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Developer, this area we want to protect and we don't want to see housing developments in this area. However, if you absolutely want to build a housing development in this area, we may make you make a cash payment to a land bank fund in exchange for being able to get permission to build in this so that we can then turn around and protect other parcels, right? Um, that's one way to do it. Another way is actually sending and receiving rights where you actually team up a developer with a landowner and somebody, basically they purchase the development rights directly from the landowner. And that becomes a very complex process at that point because you'd have to have a willing seller and a willing buyer of those land rights at the same exact time which I would say is a needle in a haystack. <laughs> That's where most municipalities that do it, do it relative to the land bank in the middle, where it's cash payment that comes in, cash payment that goes out. So your first example, mm -hmm. can't that be considered in center zone? Similarly, yes. I yes. mean, if somebody wanted to develop in the Pendleford district, okay. and they come to the town board and say, look, I want to develop this piece of property and I'm willing to give you a million bucks to put in your parks budget. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that you just explained. Um, yes and no. So if, 
think about this for a second. So the Paddle for Brook Greenway, the Strategic Climate Protection Area, remember we just had this discussion about the agriculture enhancement overlay, right? And that's not in place throughout that whole area. If it was in place and it included an aspect relative to TDR that says, Mr. and Mrs. Developer, you can't build in this area unless you either meet the baseline zoning or you either come up with an incentive to the town, incentive zoning, or you can make a contribution to the land bank fund in exchange for the transfer of development rights, right? So then they're getting relief from that zoning restriction. But today that zoning restriction is not in place. So there's nothing to prohibit the developer from just coming in to do it. So there would have to be a restriction in place for the developer to want to enter into that arrangement. So it sounds to me like it's the same thing we're talking about now. It's incentive zoning. If there was a restriction in place. If there was a restriction in place currently, yes. If there's no restriction, you can't stop it from developing anyways. Correct. Right. So there has to be a restriction in order for a TDR yes. to work. Yes. And if there's a restriction in place, then we have the incentive zoning. It could be used theoretically. It could be used in that, that context also, yes. Which but it could be used in other contexts as also incentive zoning. Yes, it could be used in other contexts also, but it would be could be used in every instance where there's a TDR necessary. Essentially, yes. As long as there's a restriction. Yes. So this eliminates the need for a TDR, theoretically. Well, we don't have a need for a TDR because we don't have the restriction. But if the restriction was in place, yes. The incentive zoning takes the place of the TDR anyways. It, it could the way we have this worded because the board could negotiate that cash to go to a fund or a project. Right. Right. Yes. Or some other incentive. Correct. Mm -hmm. A third tool. <laughs> but no, John, you're 100% spot on. You're 100% yeah. spot on. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we need a TDR if we implement this ordinance well you're not you won't need it anyway because there's right. no restrictions, no restrictions. Right? the restriction has to is really the thing that would trigger somebody to either want incentive zoning or tdr but we're talking about the agricultural area i mean now specific tdr is specific to agriculture yeah is specific to agriculture yes okay thank yeah. you yeah that's actually defined in state law specific to agriculture and natural resource aspect. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Any other conversation or discussion on this? Thanks. I just wanted to have that spelled out at the same time while we're discussing. They're so similar. So thank you. That answers your question, Adeline. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any other conversations? Well comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Maybe. Motion move it. Motion move it. Make a motion move it. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Moving it to. Technically, Adeline, you can't vote because you're not participating by Zoom and visible. So okay. the record will have to stand as four to eight. So. If we could see her, if you could see her, she could vote, but because we can't see her, she can't vote. Anyway, so, yeah, she's comfortable. Another, another rule. Yeah. 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 I don't know what's that one. So, set the public hearing for August, or are we moving it to other committees to review? For the incentive zoning, mm -hmm. we, the town board can take so it would be in August. Set a public for hearing September for months. September. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Same with the scenic view shed. Anything else we need to talk about this morning? I actually have two quick things that came up in some other meetings I was in this month, if you don't mind me bringing them up. Not at all. Go ahead. Okay, so the first one came from ECB. Um, as you may or may not be aware, the tree team has been working on making a recommended native species list. And the ECB was wondering if we wanted to at some point discuss the possibility of uh, making an ordinance change to not allow the sale or planting of invasive species. So 
something that they brought up, and I'm not sure where that is with state law at this point, but that was something they wanted me to bring up in ordinance. And then the second thing was, John, I'm sure you remember from the CIC meeting, um, there was a question about if we should reduce the minimum square footage to build a home from the current 1300 square feet. So, um, yes, I think we should add both of those to our uh, list of topics. I think we have a number really four, is. we have accessory dwelling units. Um, but I mean, that's a second structure, so it might actually need its own line. Which the minimum size of a home? The minimum size right now is uh, 1200 square feet. No, I'm saying. Yes, but I know. Future topic. I think see them as two separate. I, I think it's two accessory. Yeah, tiny homes and yeah. Yeah. minimum square footage. What, what's the status of ADUs on the state level? Um, so the governor pulled it from mm -hmm. the uh, yeah. existing budget, but from everything I was told is it's coming back. So I think that we're probably going to be hearing more about that more than likely in the new legislative cycle. And um, topics for our next meeting. Uh, Doug sent around, actually he did send it to everybody. The uh, We need to codify the sidewalk law. Well, that's more for just list of your topics. There's well, no, but yeah. I mean, we should add it to our yeah. list. Yeah. That was sidewalk maintenance, wasn't mm -hmm. it? <clears throat> We have it, we've adopted it, but it's never been added to the code. Should we, uh, I, I did read that in preparation for today's meeting. Is it legal to also write in responsibility for failure to maintain the damages, injury and damages and indemnification of the city or the town yeah so that's actually in there the indemnification whether or not that will hold up i mean that's not going to stop somebody from suing us but okay. it is in there um in terms of if somebody well, is yeah, what's injured. the legal status of that I, I know it's been, yeah okay can you impose responsibility on the budding landowners to yeah, so identify the municipality so not to indemnify the responsibility of the uh, joining landowners for maintenance, right? But for failure to maintenance, mm -hmm. failure to maintain. Correct. I... And so that's in there. So there's a, a clause that I actually, when I researched that, that section that I uh, circulated in that draft is actually in there because I pulled it from, I saw uh, 11 municipalities that have these sidewalk laws have this same exact paragraph and it's that indemnification section. So I just lifted it, copied it word for word, pasted it. But we don't know the legal enforceability of it. I don't know if Chris, it's uh, been a court case or not. Relative oh, there's to, gotta be. There's, there's probably, gotta be because, you know, that's, that's a given. But it goes back and forth too. So I did on not the read the ordinance, but what, you're, what I'm hearing you say is that the ordinance says if the landowner, adjacent landowner, does not maintain the sidewalk, they indemnify the town. They're supposed to. That yes. the town the is town this is not. This is ancient language. I was involved in the, the county of Monroe, the city of, of Rochester 30 years ago. So it's got to be tested, the, the responsibility to indemnify. Here, I'm just pulling it up. However, that's um, it's we for a future that's for yeah. future topic. But yeah. um, what are the important topics that we need to address coming up? Solar, solar, solar. Yeah, yeah uh, Bob, of course, would like to address the committee uh, regarding an update on his uh, working on a draft of uh, the revision to the solar ordinance. Did anyone see the article in the paper this weekend talking about how um, California now has the unintended consequences of it. disposal of the product, waste product? Tons of it. The fact that most of these waste products that are uh, harmful to the environment come from China. Yep. 
So we want um, to talk about this at the next meeting. If it joins the committee, yes. <laughs> Solar. Solar. Sorry, Chuck, I don't know if we can get a copy of that because I don't know that I've seen it. I know Chris Nadler told me that he has serious reservations about the proposal from Bob. Oh, okay. So um, somehow we, can, we need to. We can. Has, well, when has he seen that? We can we can flesh it out yeah, more we, at yeah. our meetings if Chris has a because Chris wasn't at our last meeting. So. Yeah, let me send we're, him we're the latest. A lawyer. I'll send it to him to Nadler. Do we need any other topics other than solar in our next meeting, or do we think solar will take, solar the take a minute? Solar well, solar will be with a question mark. That might take a minute or two. Yeah, but maybe what, even why a question mark, Chuck? Still, I think if if, if uh, this draft is not ready to be presented to the committee what? well let's, he let's still has it. some good things let's, to say yeah, yeah we can have a general discussion on yeah. some of the issues that since our solar law was adopted there's been some changes in the industry uh, legally legislatively that uh, he's tried to include in this draft mm -hmm. so we can talk about those things how it, how it specifically fits into the draft that's something we can work on later do we have solar language now? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Currently, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you pull that and send it to everybody just to refresh all of our memories? Yeah. Yeah. We can send that. Out. Yeah. I'll send it out. It's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that will be our only topic at the next meeting. Yes, we'll invite Bob, of course. And I might not be here. Okay. It's August first, right? Yeah. Let's talk about that. I apologize. My August travel 1st. plans have changed. Oh, okay. are you still? Traveling, so I will be traveling okay. on August first. Okay, so August first. Will you be back on the eighth? John, we'll be back on the eighth. So will I. Everybody else good? I won't be visiting. I won't be visiting you guys on the eighth, but I'm not on the Texas place. Sure. I'll be in Utah. Well, it, it's 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 a topic we will. I don't think we'll be finished on the eighth. Yeah. So I don't think we'll uh, start finish creating that no. something. <laughs> um, speaking of solar, the guy that spoke at the training Dave, session. Dave. Dave. Yep. 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 Get, Are we still on to August first? Yes. Yeah. No. Get, no. No. We're going to no, go August eighth. August eighth. Okay. 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 Yep. Good. Because that was Does that work for you, Adeline? Yeah. Interesting. The eighth. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. There is a cemetery committee meeting in this room at nine, but I think they're actually a little smaller. We can ask them maybe to move. Well, we the... could also just go to the um, town board office too. We could ask the cemetery folks to move upstairs. Yeah, or the Honolulu room, I think. Because we'll need need to be able to I'm zoom Bob for August first. Yeah, 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 August first. Sean, can you invite Chris and take this way? Yeah. Yeah. Greg, I know Greg, the Ag Committee also had some concerns with the solar. So should we invite to... Bob DiCarlo as well as a rep from the Ag Committee? You can ask him. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I, I know Bob and Bob. Or someone talked. from Ag. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they did talk. Ag to attend that conversation on the solar? Yeah, they were. This was a topic. Because they're they, concerned that solar is going to um, migrate into farmland. Yes, absolutely. It always does. Because it is yep. happening. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Thanks, everyone. Hello. I'm sorry to again be on speakerphone. Okay. Glad you could attend. Thanks. Thanks. Good. See you, Bye. Did you